Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about epoxy flooring, flake flooring to be exact, how we do it, how much it costs, and why you should have it in your basement floor or even in your garage if you're thinking about finishing it off and putting flooring in a space like this. Now, in case you guys don't know, I'm a brand ambassador for DeWalt this year in 2024 and they've supplied me with a bunch of DeWalt tools so we'll be you know as we go through the video we'll be going through some of these tools they supplied me with and show you you know what we use to do the prep on a lot of these floors and here's some of them right here these concrete floor grinders they have they have both battery powered and cord powered uh, tools plus these really cool HEPA vacuums that keep the grinding pretty much dust free on all these floors that we do so the first step when we do these floors is the prep is is we grind the floors we grind them for a couple reasons one is to clean the floor now this is new construction so this concrete floor is in pretty good shape those lines you see are the saw cuts we put in we actually poured this floor you know probably six months ago before the house was even built so we're the ones that sawed those joints in the floor and that just helps if the concrete does want to crack it's going to want to crack in that joint here's some more of the tools the battery powered ones and the corded ones that we use to grind the floor with so we grind the concrete to prep it to clean it and to open up the pores so the coating will bond and adhere to the concrete really really well now if there are any little imperfections any little pinholes or chips or divots you know done during construction that need to be patched we'll mix up some of our patch material and just you know patch that in there let it harden up and then we can just grind over that to smooth it out there was a, only a couple spots in this floor that needed it that one little hole in the floor and then the line basically between the concrete floor and then the concrete wall we wanted to patch that up so we can make the epoxy floor seamless right up to the door and what we're using today we're just using a little bit of bondo that hardens up in about 15 20 minutes and we can grind it flat and then we vacuum everything really really good get everything really clean so when we mix up the coating it'll bond to the concrete we got we got our flakes and the buckets ready to go Darren's mixing up the and we're actually using a two-part polyaspartic today from deco Crete supply in Ohio poly armor 90 is what we're using and then we're adding their pigment to it so it's gonna go down kind of tan or beige in color and then we're gonna broadcast the flakes into that here's some of the equipment and the tools we use we wear spike shoes when we do this we use a squeegee to to kind of move the polyaspartic around and then an 18 inch roller or four inch roller and brushes to do all the edges in the main rolling parts of the floor Darren mixes up the product for us and he kind of gets it out of the bucket for us and then Luke and I kind of spread it around roll it around and then we're gonna put the epoxy the flakes into the coating here the polyaspartic here now why I recommend using this type of floor in a basement like this or even in your garage is because what we've seen over the years is we've replaced a lot of other types of flooring with these floors because basements do tend to get wet they tend to get damp they tend to flood sometimes and other types of flooring people have had to rip out because of water damage basically is carpet uh, the, the click flooring stuff that goes together, you know, like Pergo or something like that, or even, you know, hardwood flooring, um, and mainly, mainly those three types of flooring people have had to uh, rip out because of water damage, and then they've called us because they don't want to replace, replace it with another floor that can get damaged by water. So if you have, let, let's say in the utility room, if a pipe breaks, your basement gets flooded this type of flooring isn't going to get damaged if you have a crack in your wall and water gets through the foundation wall into your basement the, your basement floods this type of flooring isn't going to get damaged if you have a flood somehow like these people live on a lake if the lake rises up so high and the water gets in the basement 
this flooring isn't going to get damaged. It's going to make it through that type of disaster, if you want to call it, versus other types of flooring you're going to have to rip out and replace, and it's just really expensive. So we've come in and had to replace a lot of other types of flooring in people's houses with this type of flooring right here and had really, really good luck. People love it. They look really good. They're easy to maintain. They're easy to keep clean. They are... They can be made uh, slip resistant if, you know, like these people are going to be walking in from swimming in the lake and they didn't want something that was going to be really, really slippery. So the flakes do give it a tiny little bit of texture. So that's going to help. And then you can see that, we're, you know, we're going through the process of installing it right here. We can, we can do this in a day. This stuff can dry fast enough based on the type of products we use. So we could do the whole process in a day. That includes the grinding, you know, all the prep, any little bit of repair, the base coat like this with a flake, and then the top coat can be done in one day and then you're not down, you know, for a week or two with someone trying to install flooring in, on your project if you need to get right back on this thing. This job, this particular job, we didn't, we weren't in that much of a hurry, so we didn't, we didn't make it one long day. We actually spread it out into a couple days, just because it's for us. It's kind of like off season for pouring concrete. It's not quite as busy and crazy as usual, so you know, if we spread this out into a couple days, it just makes the job really, really easy. So we're getting this had three basically three big rooms in the basement it was about 900 square feet and you know Darren Darren's the mixer he's the guy that takes takes care of mixing all the product together getting it out on the floor making sure I have plenty of flake to broadcast Luke kind of cuts the edges he spreads it out with the squeegee and then he gets the 18 inch roller and he kind of gets it all rolled out for me and then you know I'll make sure I broadcast the flake at the right time. We usually let the we usually let the polyaspartic tack up just a little bit before we broadcast the flake into it. And then I broadcast what I call to rejection. So I I make sure I completely cover that base coat of tan in the flake. And then that's going to be your finished floor. So basically when you're picking out colors for a floor like this, you're going to want to pick out the colors in the flakes. There's, and there's hundreds of different types of colors and flake to pick out. We have a general set of, you know, 8 to 10 that we do most of the time. And then if you just can't find one you like out of those, I can send people to a website. And they can go to that website where we actually purchase the flake. And they can, they can pick from there hundreds of different types of color variations. Or you can make a custom one yourself if you want right on their website. This is the basic process. So we dump out a little bit, get it rolled out. You know, we do it in batches. We do so much per, you know, per square feet. So we'll we'll measure out. You know, if Darren's mixing a gallon at a time, we'll measure out how many square feet that gallon's supposed to take, and then we'll we'll just mark that off, and we'll get that gallon dumped out in that marked off area of square footage. And I cover all this, you know, I got, if you want to learn how to do this, or if maybe you want to try to do this yourself, I have courses that teach us. Those are all down in the description. You can find them down there. But just to give you a little basic idea of how we keep track of everything, everything's all measured out and done, you know, specifically to a T. That's how we learned how to do it. And that's how I teach people how to do it, including how much flake to broadcast per square foot like this. Now you can see those light spots. I'll go back on that and I'll make sure none of those light spots show through. They're all covered with flake. All right, here we go. Full flake floor. So we'll give that overnight to cure up and we'll be back tomorrow. We'll scrape it, vacuum it, top coat it, and it'll be good. All right, so this is the next morning. We, we came in, we, we scraped the we scrape the flakes with uh, floor scrapers we vacuum up all the excess flake 
you know, if there's a lot, we can put it back in the box and reuse it because it's clean. And now Darren's mixing up the top coat. Top coat's clear. It's polyspartic. It's the same PolyArmor 90, just without the color, which makes it really, really easy to use, you know, from DecoCrete Supply. And then, again, Darren will mix up. When we do top coat like this, using this stuff, we mix up two gallons, so one gallon of Part A to one gallon of Part B. And then, you know, we have this all measured out so we know exactly how far we need to go per square foot. And then it's the same process, you know, Darren gets it dumped out, Luke cuts in the edges, gets it spread out, and then on this where I'm not broadcasting flake, I can come back with the 18 inch roller and get everything rolled out. We, first thing I do is just basically what we call W rolling, which I'm doing right now. And then I'll go back after I get it all rolled out the first time and I'll just roll it side to side for what we call the finish roll to make sure that it's all spread nice and evenly no roller lines and this stuff does pretty much once you get it rolled out you know there's quite a bit of working time with it so it's pretty easy to do it it rolls out without any lines without any puddles especially on a nice new floor like this that's fairly flat you know there's no real dips or humps in it for the product to kind of roll off from or collect in a, in a dip see how nice that rolls out right there and we'll just do it again room by room is basically how we do things one room at a time move on to the next room Luke's gonna get it spread out and then I'll come behind him Darren's just this stuff has a little bit of a pot life to it so you don't have to get it all spread out and get too far ahead of yourself but with three guys, with three people like this, this this is really really easy. Two of us could do this actually pretty easy too. Two people that really know what they're doing can do this really easy. And if it was just a small, let's say it was just one room like this that we're in right here, I mean, <clears throat> one person could really do this by themselves. We had to mix inside. It's really cold outside. It's it's in the middle of the winter here in Maine, so we put our little mixing station inside, and then once we get down to the last kit. What we call a kit Darren mixes a kit at a time based on how much we need we'll pick all that stuff up get it out of the way and then Luke and I can finish spreading it out and this is you know basically it's a bulletproof floor here this stuff's really durable it's really it's really tough it's really scratch resistant it's you know it hides it hides dirt really easy especially when you pick a color like this so, I mean, I highly recommend this type of uh, flake flooring, polyaspartic flake flooring or epoxy flake flooring if that's what you want. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. You know, if you like this type of flooring, we do a ton of them in garages. We do a lot of them in basement floors like this on finished houses. And if you want to learn about this, that link will be down in the description too. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. You know, come on back. Make sure you subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.